So hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Data Heaven. Here's the thing, you guys told me like, hey, your, your stat uh, tutorial does not work anymore. And I was a bit happy because I was hoping, hmm, maybe they have made the changes that I was hoping they would make. And yes, they have. Not only that, let me show you, let me show you. So I'm going to show you how you can get now data from your stat, schedule refresh it without having any gateway, and then just in your reports. This is so cool. So cool. Let's get started. So here's the thing. Eurostat has changed the API and supports SDMX 2.1. Like, why are you happy about it? Well, I was part of a project last year together with OECD to create a connector that supports SDMX. So we have a connector that can read the Eurostat data with just a few clicks. And not only that, they now certify it, which means that we don't need a gateway. So Eurostat supporting it and OECD guys certifying it, we are in data heaven. I'm, seriously, this is really, really cool. So I'm going to show you how it works and we're going to create a data flow that will yeah, bring us to the next level of data consumption. So this is how it works. Uh, <laughs> The documentation is a bit rough on the edges, but I'll show you and it's not, you know, once you know, you know. So this is the format that the connector supports, the connector that is available in Power BI. So I'm going to copy the, that. So you go to Power BI, new source, you go to more, and then you search SDMX. So here you have it, connect. And now we're going to paste the stuff that we just copied. You decide if you want to have codes and labels or just codes or just labels. Normally, you would probably want to have just labels in case you're unsure. And voila, here you have the data. And now that you have the base code, so this is the base URL that you need. You can just replace any Eurostat dataset code here and it'll work. Let me show you. So we go here to Statistics Eurostat and then you can just grab anyone that you like, you know, real GDP growth rate, awesome. So we grab this little code in there, go to Power BI, and here I'm going to duplicate these, and instead of this NAMA, whatever, we're going to paste the code that we just copied, and then just enter, and you have the new data there. How cool is that? Now, Eurostat has a query builder that allows you to uh, build a query with filters, you know, in case you don't want to have everything, and it's very, very useful. But it doesn't really work with SDMX, let me show you. So here we have the query builder, I'm going to generate a new query, you paste the code for the, for the query, that, the data that you want, and here you can actually select, select stuff that you like, and generate the query. This query here, if we copy it to the clipboard, I'll show you. I'm gonna paste it there. So you see, the difference is just the like file method, which would be this one. And then you can just replace the database name in there and then format STMX. The problem is that the filters that you apply does not work the same ways. And there is no STMX query builder for your stat that I have found. If there is one, please let us know in the comment box. So how do you actually filter a data set? You think depending on how big your data set is or the data that you are requesting, you might get into API limits, so you might want you might need to filter it. So you need to know how to filter it. So to filter, you need to add in here at the end of the query. Let me show you. So in the documentation, if we go to data filtering, it tells you how it works. So it tells you that you have to add the values of the columns that you want to filter to. You have to specify them literally, which is a huge pain <laughs> without a query builder. So you can see here that for the NAMA 10 GDP, frequency, if you want frequency A, you have to write A. If you want unit CP mirror, you have to add it. So you add the filters with dot. So let me show you. I'm gonna copy these, which is a filter query, and then I'll show you how it works. 
So I'm going to go in there. We need to add the format. Copy that. Duplicate. And now I'm going to paste it. And then as you can see here, it says you have to put the my guess in the order that it comes. So frequency is A, you see, this is the unit is CB. And then you have B1G there. And then this is Luxembourg. If you want to add another country, like for example, Denmark, you do plus DK. And then if you go in here, you'll see that you get both. And then you will have to do that with every single one of them. So if you go here where we have the row query, let me grab another item. So for example, if we grab this unit that we don't have, go back there, and the unit is the frequency unit. So this is frequency here, I have to do plus, and then we will get both. So you need to build the query yourself manually, which again is a little bit of a pain without a query builder, but it's not impossible to do. You can actually, now that you know how to do it, you can't do it. So we have our query. How do we schedule refresh this so we can have live data from Eurostat? This is how you do it. So go to powerbi.com, your tenant. And then I have a workspace called Eurostat, I think. There, Eurostat. And you go to New, Data Flow. A data flow is Power Query Online. It does the same thing as Power Query, but it does it online. So add new tables, and the benefits of it is that you can schedule refresh it because it's in the cloud. And then you're going to, uh, the, the SDMX connector is actually here somewhere. If you just search for it, I'll show, you see it there, but we've already built a query. So we're going to do add new table, and then we're going to do a blank query, blank query, next, and that will take us to Power Query. And once we are here, you can just go to Transform, no, Home, Advanced Editor, and then paste the code. You could actually copy paste also, like Control C on the table, Control V here. It works too. Uh, then you have to configure the connection. It's anonymous, connect. And now we are live on Eurostat. It's, it's so cool. It's so cool. So this was GDP something. So imagine you can have currency rates, you can have population. You have to refresh it once before you can schedule refresh it. You could have population uh, numbers if you are a market researcher. You could have anything. It's just so cool. Go back to Eurostat, and we need to wait until it refreshes before we can schedule refresh it because I had to refresh at least one time. So let's do wait for that. And now that it refreshed, you go to settings, you go to the data source credentials we've already authenticated, so we don't need to do anything. Refresh, turn it on, and then you need to add a time, otherwise it won't work. Apply. And that's it. You have now scheduled refreshes. You again, you could have like currency conversions. You could have like growth for countries. You can have, you know, if you're targeting products for children, you can have children ages in the entire Europe. But it just refreshes. Like it's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so in case you haven't worked with data flows before, you're probably still wondering. Okay, I have this data flow in here. How is that going to help me? Well. Now that you have set up your data flow, you go to Power BI, Data Flows, Workspaces, and then here in Eurostat, this is the workspace that we created, we have the GDP and the population, so you just connect to it. And as you can see, now we have the data in here, so you can combine it with your own data and publish it back. It will refresh by itself, so you 
don't have to worry about it. So every day, the day that you said, the time that you said, it will go to your start and grab new data. So you know that you have up-to-date data and then you can share it with your organization. You can share the data flow with your organization. You can see your report. It's absolutely brilliant. So now you have, again, you have currency conversions, you have finance data, you have demographics of Europe in your fingertips with just a few clicks. If you want to have data to practice Power BI, you have it now. This is live, real live data. So you can really make amazing reports using it. So really, really cool. I'm looking forward to see what you create with this. And I will see you again in the next video.